Oh man, Steve, I love Steve Winwood. He, he Steve won Winwood? um he album won. of the year that year. He won. In eighty six. He won. He won album of the year that year in eighty six. All right, everybody. Oh jeez. Surprise. Every time I go, this is the time. We're gonna get it right. Hi everybody. Oh jeez. I'm still not doing it. There it is. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Please like, subscribe, and comment below. It'll be fire. <laughs> uh, welcome back, everybody. My name is Jay Ryan. We have uh, Nicole Ryan over here to my, uh, yeah, there she is. And uh, our guest this evening is Manuel Carrillo the third. You know him from uh, Seduced by Speed on the Motor Trend channel. Uh, we know him from Breakfast Club and our real life because he's a real uh, life personal friend. And uh, he's on the family plan over here. He fills his own water usually, <laughs> etc. Anyway, we're officially, officially, I think we're going to be talking about BMW uh, because he's got a great press car he wants to talk about. Beyond that, <sighs> holy crap, the Oscars, holy crap. You know, we have quite a connection with Chris Rock. Chris Rock's the reason we're married, <laughs> the reason we know each other, the reason we're married, the reason everything. We both used to work for him individually and together. Um, I've never smacked him, never seen him smack before. We're going to be talking about the Oscars, um, all that and more with uh, Manuel Carrillo. And uh, let's see who's here. My, Canadian Mike may tune in a little bit later. Otherwise, it's just going to be us and the Instagram audience. But a lot to unpack today. Yeah. <laughs> a lot to unpack. I mean, that affected me pretty heavily. Hang, hang on, buddy. You're not on. Uh, you're not, I know you're on camera, oh. but you're not on mic yet. Uh, anyway, all that and more. And now the Instagram audience. Let's see. Where's Nicole? Topless Targa. She's right there. She's right there. Uh, Chucky Poo. <laughs> Chucky Poo, my new favorite freaking screen name of all time. Chucky Poo. Oh, my God. Thank you for being here, Chucky Poo. Just so I can say it. 541944. Mother Blue Goose is here. And Klein 11, Topless Targo. Man, great, great names up there. Anyway, uh, Late Night Playset with Manuel Carrillo starts now. You trim your beard. You look for, and he did a shave. Everybody looks great. One, two, three. Look at this. This one's not going anywhere. This one's staying here. I'm cool with that one, two, three, because that's the last part of my name. So I'll take oh, it. Oh, you are. You are. You're the coolest third I know. <laughs> I could turn him on, but I think it's, yeah, I think it's done. I think Aww. it's done. Oh, 
here comes some more. Oh. Here comes a few more. Three more. You want to throw? Oh, three or four more. All right. <laughs> it's the bubble count, everybody. We're watching the annual bubble fall. The American oh, Bubble Company. <laughs> Turn this around. Welcome back to Late Night Playset. Uh, Jay Ryan, Nicole Ryan. Um, over there in a few minutes, he's going to be in here. Manuel Carrillo. It's good to see you. <laughs> in, in the meantime. In the meantime, there's actually a lot to talk about, and uh, and I'm happy to do it. So let's do it. What's <laughs> happening? How is everybody on Instagram? I've missed you. Uh, we have missed you. We have been so busy lately doing behind-the-scenes things that hopefully will then make everything going forward easier so that we can spend more time with everybody and uh, blah, blah, blah. But foundation news, all of that, all of that, banking news, you know. GoFundMe news. All the damn shit that we've been waiting on is finally <laughs> happening this week. Finally got the paperwork for the foundation last week. The Auto Immunity Foundation. That's right. The Nicole Shabbat Ryan Foundation is called the Auto Immunity Foundation. Or, I love that. Or Auto Immunity Foundation. Good job. No, the. <laughs> it gives you say the the, but it's not part of the name. It's just AIF, Auto Immunity Foundation. Uh, .org. The website's being built, but .org. Uh, and the GoFundMe is still live, so if you want to contribute, by all means, still do. Uh, otherwise, the 501c3 is officially up and active, whatever that means. The bank account is open. I think uh, <laughs> it takes a couple days before it's actually active to receive the funds and whatever, but uh, it's actually real and happening. So uh, the Autoimmunity Foundation will be able to receive tax-deductible donations from uh, anybody and everybody in the future. So basically, you have a cup for people to filleth. Cupeth for people to fill. <laughs> it's wrong both ways. I don't care. I followed it. But That's... people asked what they can do to donate. And this is a good answer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'll be much easier to call it in a week. You know what I mean? When there's just like, oh, there's a button and you just go there and whatever. Or yes. you send a digital. But compared to, I'm all about the grass is always greener moving forward. And before I didn't have anything to say. And now I do. Well, I feel that your head is about you the last few days. How do you feel? I do, too, and I'll credit medication for that, the combination. Really? The kinds of medicinal and recreational, I need to combine them. Hmm. They were different parts of my brain. I mean, theoretically, it's all the same stuff. You know what I mean? Like, there's not a... A table where they make this one and they make that one. It's sort of like That's how you purchase it. That's why recreational works the way it does. It's built of the same compounds that the medicinalists. They just target different things. As long as you know what you're doing and you have something down that seems to be working for you, that's all I care about. If we can then figure out the science of it, whatever you're figuring out, uh, then we've really got something here. And your foundation is going to take off. I mean, like, you won't even be able to handle it. <laughs> Bigger than your wildest dreams. Yeah, I think we will. All right. There's a lot more to do, but we know good people. We do. We do. We wouldn't have gotten this far if it weren't for all of the people that who helped so either true. advise us or help facilitate or contribute financially. Truly, straight across the board. And at this time, I would like to tell you that it is Tuesday, March 29, 2022. <laughs> and it is Tradecraft Tuesday, speaking of this beautiful thing. However, we, while we have some Tradecraft, I, I want to give you this. Uh, it's the Deftones one, which you've been sucking on. You kind of like that one, too. Deftones, the band. No joke. They, uh, they make a, a cannabis line now. Dope. And uh, she's testing it. And uh, this is a hookup thanks to our good friend Paul Rivera from Rivera Amps. Uh. He, of course, is friends with the Deftones <laughs> and every other band in music. And uh, whatever. I, I hope you like it. To me, it tastes more like, well, I shouldn't say. I don't want to. Yeah. At some point, she will release what she thinks about it, and it'll be in written form, and somebody will be able to look at it wherever they want to. Or at a certain place when they want. <laughs> is that I'm true? figuring out. It's easier for me to talk with people that are knowledgeable about things. Versus writing what my opinions like that can go on forever because I'm very well. Whatever this becomes, it'll be whatever the whatever the media becomes. You will be uh, a vo a voice and uh, a face behind some of these things, and you will be saying what you think and how they affect you. And this one's good for this and not good for that because you know better than anybody. Yeah, is that fair? It doesn't need to be a written thing. I mean, whatever it happens to be. 
Yeah. I have to figure out some of my stuff is opposite and some of it's not. So I'm figuring out my shit, but. Okay. All right. Well, I'll there's no pressure talking. to finish any of this today. That's for sure. Uh, I am excited to get Manuel in here. However, we want to talk about the foundation, Autoimmunity Foundation. Uh, maybe I did enough of that. I guess we did enough of that. I want to talk about the damn Oscars. <laughs> But I think we should wait for Manuel to be in here for that. And then I'm getting texts from other people once I mention it. They're like, oh, I'll come on and talk about, you know, Joe Gatt. And he wants to have Reggie come on and do a whole thing. Whatever. Um, Joe, <laughs> Joe, Joe Gatt's, his whole thing is bullying. He's against bullying. And he suffers from, from alopecia. <laughs> so it's, he's kind of like, I check every box. Just yeah. put me on. <laughs> I, I really liked what he had to say uh, earlier today on his Instagram. He, he posted a really... Um, thoughtful commentary about it that i appreciated reading so uh shout out to joe gatt yeah 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 he's an awesome dude he's we he's he'll be here soon yeah. for sure uh pinstripe chris in this art car if you haven't seen it here it is holy crap i am so excited i'm so excited you know i took the cover off the desk today and i had sort of forgotten about it i had love forgotten it. that it was both here and and so good and just kind of all of it I'd I'm really amazed. That. If you have no idea what we're talking about, you see this new toy car here. Believe it or not, it's the same old toy car that used to be here. There was a green car here a while back, and Pinstripe Chris took it home and uh, customized it and made a little uh, car-style yellow car out of out of it. It's really remarkable, and we are we are grateful. It's a, it's truly a piece of art. Uh, the only downfall to any of this is it came out so good that other people are going to be hitting him up for shit like this all the time. And he doesn't have time to do a million of these. Unless they're really lucrative. Maybe this could maybe this is maybe maybe it's worth it. New avenues all around. I love it. I think it's great. I think it's really great and uh and I'm grateful. So watch the Pinstripe Chris show because he talks all about uh how and why he came up with this as a concept and then also we go nuts and bolts crazy on his Porsche uh excuse me. <laughs> Luigi Fado only the Ferrari <laughs> Uh, his Ferrari 348 uh, that I drove the other day, and uh, and we talk in depth about <laughs> things Ferrari people would care about. I guess maybe other people I don't know, uh, but I found it interesting and I learned a lot. So check out that show. Uh, Taylor Cahill, thanks for checking in. Smoky Golf Apex Dave, I am Swanee. Hi Swanee. Carissable is here. Carissable is the one to thank for. The initial sending of the green car that's under the yellow car here. She sent the initial toy. And um, and here it is now. I think we're all pretty thrilled with the result. So I just want to say thanks again to uh, Pinstripe Chris. All right. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, wow. All right. I, let's talk about the Oscars without talking about the Will and, and, uh, and uh, Chris of it all. Oscar night. Happens to be zoom 26 years ago. Go back, back in time, 26 years, and the night that Jay Ryan is obsessed with the new set of David Letterman and all that shit. And I sneak into the theater and I get let in, sneak into the theater, whatever. And 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 at the end of my self guided tour of the Ed Sullivan Theater, I end up finding and then stealing this microphone. Uh, that was the reason there was a repeat that night. We found out later in life because Mrs. Ryan worked in the business. It was Oscar night. So, of course, there was a repeat that night. We never really tell that part of the story, but it was Oscars night. So, today, uh, oh, no, so it was last night, right? It wasn't actually Oscar night, but the date was. Last night was the night, 26 years ago, that I sort of, <laughs> when Biff took the almanac and <laughs> skewed into this alternate tangent. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but the 26-year curse is broken. And, uh, and, and some stuff I know about that I'm going to, some stuff I know about I can't share, and some stuff I don't have factual yet, but I know is coming, and it's all really, 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 really good. It's all really good. It's all really good. For us, for us, for us as a show, for us as a group, the audience, you and we, um, it's just all going to be great. So it's a great year. 2022 is going to be good. And that guy over there is nodding his head, so he must agree. Mm -hmm. As I'm in you, the chat with you, too. Oh, you're in the chat, too. You are uh, growing your hair out as well? I am. Yeah. I am. I want to kind of cut out the or cut off the, the back bits and oh. keep the top more long. But, yeah, that's that's where we're going with it. It's funny that you would bring that up because we want to get her a haircut because we need to swap whatever. We need want to get her a haircut. Yeah. But, I, but we want to do it on the show. So we want to have somebody come on and do it. Like, we'll have a show going on, and then she'll be getting her haircut the whole time over where you are. Dope. 
You know what? That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Um, so if anybody, <laughs> we need a professional groomer or hair uh, cutter who's willing to come here to the house. Uh, I mean, we can pay you, whatever. Like, you know, we'll figure it out. It's not about that. But we need somebody to come here who's willing to do it uh, live on the show, which I think is, I don't know if it's a tall order or not. Some people, I think, would jump at that opportunity. But then I feel like hair cutters are not performers. <laughs> For Generally. some people, it is. Some people, it's not. But I need a haircut, and you're gracious enough to offer us time. So... Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. So if you, if you, whatever, if you can help us with that, by all means, send us a message and uh, let's put it together. And we'll have you here on the show cutting Mrs. Hair. Uh, MC3 Films joined. Hi. <laughs> and, uh, and Ariel. Uh, oh, look. Oh, you bought a bat. It's pay to play, folks. If you want to be on this show, you got to come in here and buy a badge. You sit in that white chair. You get your credit card out on Instagram. And... Thanks, Apple Pay. <laughs> Who else is buying a badge tonight? That's you. Oh, you're the best. Topless Target, thank you. So I was going to say that I think both, uh, both of our ancillary uh, producers, production staff here, are, are, are not with us uh, on the show tonight. Usually we have one or the other, sometimes both. And tonight I think we have neither one. Producer Mike's doing something else. He said he might chime in. And I think uh, producer Ariel Ariel <laughs> is probably uh, just on the set of Kimmel or whatever show she's on today. Uh, Pete. There's a Pete here. Hank Hammer 4 bought a badge. Thank you, Hank. IG audience gets a backstage pass. See? That's what we were talking about. Thank yeah, you. But... Exactly right. Exactly right. The Dave 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 from Kansas, y'all. What is up? Jens bought a badge. Auto Kennel bought a badge. Auto Kennel, we had a great night with you uh, over the weekend. Saturday night, we had a blast. This is personal stuff, but we had Auto Kennel and a couple other friends over for uh, a little, uh, it was supposed to be pizza and a movie night. Um, it turned out the pizza, we were going to get weirdos. It turned out they don't do gluten-free and Paul Kennel celiac, so, like, so we didn't get the pizza. And then it turned out we had such a good time with the tapas hors d'oeuvres and the laughter of of the conversation that we didn't end up watching the movie so what are you gonna do i guess it's a rain check on all of the above but we had a great time hanging out together a great time hanging out together paul kramer in the house hilarious <laughs> hilarious i love it um i just amazon lets us know that the package has been de been delivered good to know and uh our channel is live on youtube so good to know <laughs> good to know and let's check in with the comments if there are any because i forgot to do it and it looks like we're good and clear there. Um, <clears throat> all right. So I think we got, oh, no, shit. Ah, so the story, the story, the story, the microphone, the anniversary, all of this stuff. Uh, we have a great guest on Thursday. Great guest on Thursday. Like, incredible guest on Thursday. Uh, James Commissar of the Commissar Collection will be here, along with his publicist, old school Hollywood publicist, Jeff Abraham, who you know from the old days, and when I looked him up, he's like the old school comedy publicist, like anybody who was famous. Anybody, the reason I'm a comedy fan is because of all the people he represented type of thing. They're both going to be in the house on Thursday. Uh, James Commissar will be on the show. What that means to you. Who is James Commissar on the Commissar Collection? What is that? It's so awesome, you guys. It's the biggest collection of television memorabilia in the world. Not just the biggest, the best as in the creme de la creme. Uh, what can I tell you about this public knowledge? Uh, the entire Johnny Carson set, desk, chairs, the whole place, the whole thing, the backdrop, the, all the walls, everything. Uh, the Cheers bar, um, the sign from MASH. I mean, everything from every uh, historical television show, the set from All in the Family, um, everything. He has taken it upon himself to save these things that would have otherwise been, uh, you know, thrown away uh, or destroyed. And, um, and it, uh, originally his intention was to do a museum. I don't know if that's still the case, but we're going to talk about it all on Thursday's show with James Commissar. And I can't wait because, bearing the lead here, he also has the original set to Late Night with David Letterman. What we thought we were getting when we contacted the museum X amount of years ago about this stuff. We were looking for that stuff. And the person I asked said, oh, you should contact this museum. They have it. So we did. And they said, yeah, we have it. We have it. We, used, we got everything. And all we have left is the desk and chairs. 
And we were like, oh, well, that's better than nothing. At least, you know, we said, we'll save some of it, whatever. And then when they sent us the pictures, we were like, that's the late show with David Letterman. That's the first set. So it's the closest thing to the late night. But it's not the late night with David Letterman set. So while we were thrilled, and still are, to get and have this stuff and use this stuff every day, it's actually not what we were after. He's got what we were originally after. <clears throat> With what he does for things, and wait till you hear the story for what he went through to get it. <laughs> that is unbelievable as well. Uh, we're going to be talking about Johnny Carson. We're going to be talking about David Letterman. All of the stuff with James Commissar on Thursday. I needed to say all that because I am really excited about it. I'm a little bit nervous. I don't even know why. He's been here before. We know him. He came over for a meeting the other day. We thought we would have to rush through because he's very busy. We rushed home from Breakfast Club for a 2 o'clock meeting. He left at 8.30 at night. We hit it off. <laughs> we are similar similar brains. I don't believe you. He's a sim- <laughs> I'm telling you, when you meet this guy, he is so fascinating. And I can't wait for you all to see him, uh, James Commissar, Thursday. Thursday the 31st, March 31st. Um, and we're going to be talking about the microphone story and why. You remember last time when I told the microphone story and how for a bit I had two. We had two at that point. I'll let you know. We only have one now, and that's because of James Commissar. What do I mean by that? Find out on Thursday. You heard me. (laughs) (laughs) I'm talking to you, too. I'm talking to everybody. Yeah. Uh, All right. (laughs) It is my great pleasure to say that they say... (laughs) All which separates men and boys is the coverage for their toys. What types of toys are we talking about, Mrs. Ryan? Collect. That's right. <laughs> God damn. Licensed in most states, St. Clair Insurance shops the top providers so you get the best coverage for your toys. Uh, when we say toys, we are, of course, talking about collector co- cars, as Mrs. Ryan pointed out. But it could be anything. Maybe you got a boat or a jet ski or some heavy equipment. Maybe you have a collection of coins or uh, Native American arrowheads. It could be anything. Uh, anything that's insurable. Maybe your business, your home. Um, St. Clair Insurance is uh, the place to be. <laughs> I, it's true. I feel like I work for them because like, people send me direct messages about it. Like, hey, what's the name of your uh, guy from uh, whatever, Haggerty and uh, the other thing? <clears throat> it happened today. Anna, Anna from uh, whatever. I think she called Jeff St. Clair. So I genuinely feel like, <laughs> come on to Jeff St. Clair. Come on over to St. Clair Insurance. We'll treat you right. Um, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> go see Jeff. Go see Jeff. Go see Jeff. You know, there's so many things we can remember. Go see Cal. No. Cal Worthington? <laughs> Are you serious? I don't remember that. You, you, then you're not even from SoCal. That's bullshit. Uh, anyway, simply plug in your computer and go to www.coverageforyourtoys.com. Coverageforyourtoys.com. Coverageforyourtoys.com. Manual? Coverageforyourtoys.com, son. <laughs> Coverageforyourtoys.com. And tell Jeff St. Clair we said hello. Also, while you're there, on the www. Um, if you happen to need any type of automotive branding and or uh, creative content, this episode has been brought to you in part by Series One Films. Series One Films helps automotive brands create engaging cinematic content for social media and advertising to grab and hold your ideal customer's attention. Check them out at SeriesOneFilms.com. That's SeriesOneFilms.com. Number one. Series, Shout out to series One. And a shout out to Taylor Hendricks from MC3 Films <laughs> and your friends at Late Night Plays It. Uh, Mark F. Medina bought a badge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Apex Dave bought a badge. Thank you guys for buying badges. Uh, it's paying for the advertising for the, for the show, and it helps. It's kind of amazing. I'm blown away. Uh, <laughs> here's the other thing I've learned. In order for your show to be <laughs> <laughs> this broke my brain the other day, but apparently it's true. In order for your show to be a success, people don't actually have to watch your show. <laughs> they, just, <laughs> they just have to know you're doing one. It's the strangest thing I've ever experienced in my life. But I'm pulling the curtain back for all of you who wonder, how do people uh, make it away of this thing with YouTube with only like 30 views or like 500 views or whatever? I don't have an answer except that they don't have to watch your show for your show to be a success. You simply have to have them watch the promotion of your show. They just have to know about it. Can you believe it? Who knew? 
I didn't know. You're a publicist. You never told me that. It doesn't actually have to do well. You just have to think it does. <laughs> <laughs> I just did the basic work to make the visibility happen, but I didn't know what that. Here's the analog speed right now saying much love, y'all. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and it's funny, too, because, you know, you go for the clicks. And then um, if you look at, like, the watch time for those, the things that have a lot of clicks, all the watch time is so low. And uh, as in, like, not watch time, but what do you call that? The duration? The duration watched? And uh, whatever. We'll get manual C3 in here. We'll talk about all about it with him, <laughs> as well as the Oscars. And... Uh, the algorithm of, of duration and YouTube and how all that works. Do we do it all? We did it all. I'm going to start crossing. Th- I need to sharpen some pencils here. Paul Kennel was here the other day, and he was throwing pencils and playing with the, you know, doing the. But then we sort of ran out of pencils, and I think I need to sharpen. Some. Oh, here's a couple. Here's one. All right. No sharpening today, folks. We've got what we need. Now I will cross off the things that I've done. <laughs> Done. Uh, uh, microphone anniversary, James Commissar. Commercial. You love commercials. That's your favorite part. <laughs> All right. Now, now, only so we can switch some cameras around and educate you about the hot sauce made by animals in the woods. <laughs> Mrs. Ryan. Mrs. Ryan. It's time now for brief words from oh so delicious hot sauce. The hot sauce made by bears. Oh, so delicious, it's a hot sauce made by bears. Garlic and serrano, mixed with love and care. You can put it on your eggs, pour it on your rice. It's great on a leg, it's better on a slice. It's oh, so delicious, it's a hot sauce made by bears. Oh, so delicious hot sauce, great on everything except oatmeal. Get your bottle today at ohsodelicious.org. One dollar from every bottle sold goes to the National Military Family Association. I'm Johnny Lieberman, and you're watching LMP. What does LMP stand for? Late Night Play Oh, yeah, that's true. I've been on there. Yeah, good show. <laughs> you should like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. There you go. What are you driving today? 63356B. <laughs> hey, what are you driving today? Here we go. walk in so now we're gonna walk in welcome back everybody to late night plays at jay ryan nicole ryan uh please like and subscribe uh if you've enjoyed this content so far and even if you haven't we would really appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> it is now my great pleasure to welcome let's see if i can do this right, to welcome uh you know him from seduce speed from speed you know him from seduced by speed on motor trend channel <laughs> we know him from breakfast club it is my great pleasure to announce while changing cameras and doing a music cue uh, Manual Career the Third, come on in, buddy. <laughs> you have to increase the heart rate to 100. Oh, no, I don't have to. Really. Oh, well, was, so let me get my water. That was like, oh, yeah, all that. <clears throat> A little bit like Bill Murray. Yeah. Didn't Bill Murray on uh, Let's Get Physical? A little bit. I see that <clears throat> was that the, that was the first letter I pulled that to you? Oh, wonderful. All right, cool. And make yourself comfortable. Yes. And now yes. we're here. You've done it. Manuel Carrillo's here. We did it, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> you want to rap? You want to call it a day? Should we talk about Chris and uh, and um, what's his name? Will Smith. <laughs> that was some crazy shit, man. Unpredictable. 
Surprising. Unpredictable. So I was coming back from a crazy Vegas bachelor. You can be wherever you cool. want. Cool. All right, cool. But then I'll have to move this to you. Perfect. Yeah. So I was crazy. Yeah. A crazy <laughs> Vegas bachelor weekend. You, that You were uh, you were away. I was away this week. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I come back Sunday morning, and I'm just resting all that day. And like I go like really hard with like the sleep at 6 o'clock because I was exhausted. I wake up at 11. The first notification I see on my phone is YouTube. Will Smith slaps Chris Rock. I'm like, what did I like? I, I'm asleep for a few hours. And I feel like I missed the world turning. One hundred percent. Yeah, you know, we, and, and with everything going on with Ukraine, impending World War Three, but like this one, it's like one of those shockers. It's yeah, it's not life or death news, but it's one of those things where it's just like it affects you so deeply when you see it because it was so unfortunate to see that. And we that, all lived through it. Is you know? that, were you, uh, what's that, well, okay, what was your, you felt it was unfortunate? It was sad. That's what, That was your take? I found it to be just sad all around. Was it 11 o'clock at night you watched it or 11 o'clock the next morning? 11 o'clock it. that night. That night, okay. And I got that YouTube notification. So it was, it's all fresh. It's all going on currently. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> we weren't even watching. We weren't even watching. I think we had just finished it, whatever the heck we were watching. And you had... Uh, gone off to go get ready for bed or whatever and I think I'd looked at my phone and of course same thing notification and uh, I was like oh my god because <laughs> we buried the lead here but like she used to represent Chris Rock of course right. but she also used to represent Serena Williams which means she would have been in the Will Smith camp for the last three years working on this movie I mean like yeah <clears throat> grilled cheese sandwich like Seriously. they are together you would have had, she would have been on both sides. This would have been her nightmare last night. This would have been her problem. In the old days when Tracy Morgan would say something about some fucking minority group, oh. <laughs> it was always her problem. <laughs> Always. I, all I was taken with was, man, you should be so happy you are not doing what you do anymore. And I walked in and I showed her the video of it actually happened. And it was one of the foreign, one of the, excuse me, foreign. Yeah. You can say foreign when it's about the press, right? Daily Mail was the best one. <laughs> you yeah. just don't, can't say foreigners, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, anyway, it was one that was unedited. Yeah. Full F-bombs, full right. everything. Right. And wow. you don't know either of those guys personally, right? I do not. Do you have any takeaway for, oh, this is real, this is fake? Uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when you first see the slap, you know, you're first watching that video. And he goes up and he's smiling. And he, and, he, and he slaps him and then he comes back and he's smiling. So it's like it feels scripted. It feels like his heart wasn't in it at that point yet. Hmm. And then he goes back to his seat and he starts howling. And then you can hear it in his voice and then you realize, oh, this is not acting. Well, the whole thing ramped up pretty quickly, right? Because, right? like, he told the joke, mm -hmm. and when, unfortunately, we don't, I, I would love to have the ISO feed from the Oscars so that we can have what was going on on the Will and Jada booth the whole time, because the camera cuts away as Chris says, which, uh, by the way, dumb joke, no offense, love Chris Rock yeah. as a person, <laughs> as an employer, <laughs> it's just not good, right. just not good joke, I mean, right. dated reference and not a good joke. Right. Um, now, if you're friends with them, like you're making a joke and whatever the heck, not a good joke. Yeah. Fuck, I forgot where I was going when I realized it wasn't a good joke. <laughs> oh, oh, I wish there was a camera on them because oh, what happens so. is uh, uh, he says the dumb joke and Will kind of laughs it off. as like, oh, dumb joke. And so does Jada at first. And then you see her sort of it, 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 <laughs> some processing occurs. And you see her face change, and they cut away back to Chris Rock. Now, I would have loved to have seen what's going on, the looks between Will and Jada at that point, between somebody said J-Lo was over there too as okay. well. Like, is all of a sudden, is there like, a, are you going to do something right. about this? Right, None of it's okay. Yeah. None yeah. of it's okay, right. in my opinion, of what happened. But, like, I'm curious what led up to it. I want to see the, yeah, that, that nonverbal exchange. Yeah. Because I'm into that. I'm it's, into the nonverbal. It's my feeling that she yeah. probably said, like, you're going to do so You're going to let him do that? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then it seemed like, you know, then he was up on his feet and then he's got to go do something. You know what I mean? It seemed like it all just happened faster than anybody really intended. Yeah. yeah. And it just shocks you. It kind of just pulls your soul out of your body a little bit. I say it's not set up because if it's if it is set up, 
it's so high that nobody would believe how high it goes. Oh, yeah. Like it's yeah. so set up to make an example so that somehow like Will Smith is going to run for president. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's yeah. a weird thing yeah. in his acceptance speech where he's like, oh, the th- I'm so blessed with the things I'm being called on to do. Yeah. Like fucking sock Chris Rock in the face and make mm. an example. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. What do you think happens from here? Well, uh, when you re- mentioned the, the the rambling speech at the end of the acceptance speech, you know what what really struck me, and, and it, 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 you know, I read it for, in, in Twitter. Like it was, you know, I'm not a Twitter person, but when stuff like that so. hits the fan, I'm scrolling through Twitter to see, you know, just get a kind of a, a sense of everything. Mm. But what I was looking at on Twitter, you know, some some people were saying that you know, love will make you do crazy things, and yeah, says every uh, domestic violence person, all that <laughs> stuff. You know, it's like. That, that sort of struck a chord with me. Like, yeah, that's not really a good thing to say after you smack somebody. Like, you know, there's, no wife, there's, honor. there's no charges filed or anything, but, like, right. if there were... And, by the way, so somebody else could still file... Char- like, there still could be, like, a civil suit from somebody else or something else. Yeah. But I just... Ugh. The whole thing is so sloppy. I was at the bank yesterday, right? Like, <laughs> with the guys, like, figuring out this uh, foundation account and whatever. Yeah. Everybody's talking about it. The guys at the bank are talking about it. Yeah. Now, I then have to say, like, man, you know, <laughs> my wife used to work with both sides of that. Can't, you know, <laughs> talk about <laughs> somebody who had a great night last night was this one. <laughs> that is the world flip Lucky. full 180. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all I it's, wanted to talk about yesterday, too, though. I mean, it, I'm, I'm really bummed that it happened yeah. if it's not a setup for some bigger, greater cause because. Will I'm just bummed for Will Smith. I mean, I've always liked Will Smith. He has worked so hard. Such a likable He's guy. this was his bright shining moment, the night he was going to win the Oscar. Uh, everything about it sucks. Everything about it sucks. Like if you're into the advancement for minorities and and equality, if you're into that whole sort of thing, it's kind of like you look at last night's pro or that Sunday night's program and. and you feel like the old timers are going, well, this is why we can't have nice things. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, wow, shit. It was his Icarus moment. He flew too close to the sun. Denzel nailed it. I think that yeah, what he yeah. said in so, the, in yep. the break of, uh, the devil comes for you in your yeah. proudest, in your highest moments. Yeah. Be yeah. careful. Your devil, devil, devil comes for you. Man, that's, it's so, it's an example. I mean, I feel like, I feel like I learned something from watching it. Yeah. I mean, like from my own personal life, like I feel like I will be better, Hopefully, <laughs> at least I, I have a new awareness of something. It's a good awareness that violence is not the answer, and it never is. <laughs> I already guess I already had that. You know, we already had that, but it's a good reminder. Yeah. You know, especially when there's war on our minds, obviously, and there's obviously war in our hearts that we're trying to remove mm. as we evolve as a mm. human race. And so I think this is just an example of this is where we're at in our collective evolution. Mm-hmm. I guess what I meant was like, you know, in those moments, like it doesn't matter whether it's, <laughs> everyone has their limit. It doesn't matter where your limit is. Right. You know what I mean? Like whatever it was for Will Smith the other night, it pushed him over his limit. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that happens to us because we're exhausted all the time. It happens all the time. And to me, the lesson was like, even when you're at your limit, you still have to show up and be your best. And mm-hmm. it's like, okay, <laughs> it's a hard pill to swallow because yeah. yeah. whatever, but I will always think of that the next time I'm like stressed out and about to freak out on somebody. I'm like, oh, Will Smith. Like, I just don't be Will Smith. Don't go figuratively. Like, I do it with my words unintentionally more than I'll never physically do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, no, right? No, I do. <laughs> I'm, as I'm saying all these words, I'm thinking to myself about my own, like, what makes Jay Ryan, what, and it's not for this show. So sorry, I'd rather talk about you. But <laughs> you learn a lot about yourself as you think about what happens to other people? Agreed. If you're willing to uh, grow. Right. right. You're willing to grow all the time. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm on your, you know, we're, we're in the trenches together trying to work on ourselves, I think. You know, Better tomorrow than yeah. today. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Not everyone's like that. Not everybody's like that, but we certainly are. That's why we get along so well. We try. Like beget like. Yeah. How is that? So let's switch gears just yes. for a second. How is the BMW you're driving? Tell yeah. us what you're driving. Why you're driving it and uh, what you think or whatever you can say. Oh, gladly. Uh, yes, yeah, so this week I'm testing the 2022 BMW i4 M50i. Mm. Uh, and it's... um. Now, the i4 is the, the electric one. That's So it's basically BMW 
4 Series Grand Coupe, but the electric version. So it's based off of the gas internal combustion based BMW 4 Series, but this is all electric. But it was a particularly good looking car. It to, um, to start right. Well, I mean, if you're, you know, not everybody's into that. Oh race. no, no, no! But I mean, you're right. Get, getting over the obvious controversy, right, right. the yeah. Grand Coupe is like a pretty good looking car. The the Grand Coupe is a good looking car because it has the the coupe's proportions and flowing lines, but it's also, um, you know, it's Four got doors. that sedan functionality and yeah. practicality. So, it's uh, yeah, it's kind of like the best of both worlds. And with the with a coupe and grand coupe versions of the four series, that grill isn't as offensive looking to me. And I've seen other people write that too. Yeah, um, I agree with those people. So yeah, it's um, <laughs> you know, I, I personally so so the, the one I'm driving is. Um, uh, it's like the Primer Gray. I'm blanking on the name right now. The the Primer Gray. Um, I, I you know I personally would order mine in like a darker gray or a black to make that grill stand out less because the grill shouldn't be the focal point of the car. The headlight should be more of a focal point. That's why the, the M is a little bit better because it's blacked out. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, the M is better because you you just have more aggressive. Uh, you have more of a, an aggressive like, oh. you know, lower valence front fascia. There's more of, shit around it to detract. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's why the M4 <laughs> and the M3 look the best with that face because they've got those more aggressive styling elements to balance things. Mm. Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, so you know, the first thing that you, you you think of when you drive this thing is looking. Okay, I'm going to compare it to Tesla Model Three because that's, that's its primary mm-hmm. competitor. And I'd say, you know, I, I what's I, it? What's the price on it? I'm the, sorry. The to price, interrupt. yeah, my as tested price on this one is seventy six thousand. It's Ooh. almost fully loaded. So, so that is Tesla uh, price. Uh, we're we're in the same Actually, ballpark. Actually, more expensive. Yeah, fully loaded. This thing goes up on the configurator to seventy eight. So if you fully load a Model 3 performance right now with full self-driving, full self-driving, no such thing, but um, I think you can get it up to about 72. Oh, wow. So yeah, you're not so getting, it is, going it's as more high. Expensive. It is okay. more expensive okay. than, the, than the, the Tesla Model 3 performance. Um, as far as, you know, I've only, no, I mean, I've only had this car for two days now. I got it yesterday delivered. Uh, I have it for a week until, uh, well, whatever, a week after the 28th is. Um, but yeah, so... Um, I'd say that, you know, in the first 27 miles of experience in this car, I'd say that the Model 3 is better to live with every day, just more braking feel, just kind of feels more well-rounded as a car for everyday driving. Wow, am I surprised to hear that. Except for the uh, semi-autonomous drive mode, BMW's Extended Traffic Jam Assistant, which allows you to drive hands-free on uh, freeways for at speeds less than 40 miles an hour, mm. that makes driving in L.A. a cakewalk. There is no stress. I mean, even if you're just doing regular uh, adaptive cruise control, that takes out so much stress as it is. But having that extra bit, it's a nice luxury you know, luxury to have. Um, I, I've tested it in other BMWs before. It's been one of my favorite um, adaptive cruise control and semi-autonomous systems mm. that on the market. So I think that's better than Tesla full self-driving. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, as, as far as like, you know, all the, you, you get all the interior accoutrements of a regular BMW. Everything, you have all those features in there. Well, with the See, that's what I like over the Tesla. It's yeah. like, oh, it feels like a car inside. It feels like an actual car inside. There's, mm. Instead of just, you know, a simple screen in the middle and then I don't know, just do kind well of barren. With that. I, I don't, don't like have that. a problem with Tesla, but I don't do well with that. Yeah, I need at least something in front of me, too. Like the model, I'm cool with the Model S, but Model 3 with just a single screen, that gives me vibes of, of Saturn or Toyota. It's the opposite of ergonomic. I don't like, know what it yeah, is. Yeah, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. But meanwhile, it is future. It is spaceship. It is Minority Report in every other movie we've seen, right? Like that is kind of like, the, oh, you just have a blah, blah. <laughs> they don't want us doing anything in the future, right? right, right They're taking yeah, less and or more I and more know. away. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, well, not in the i4. Don't, don't let me put 3, words in your mouth. I'm no, just... in the Model 3, that's what it seems like. In okay. the i4, it's still a full, it's it's a fully equipped car. You have this, uh, you know. <laughs> Four wheels! You know, but I mean, it's, like, it's got like, you know, like there's the, the, the buttons where you want them to be and like, you know, it's just like, okay, yeah, this is a real car, not some futuristic toy that's limiting me in all these different ways because it's for my own good. Like, I don't like that. I don't it's like why that. I like the Taycan over yeah. the uh, Tesla yeah. as well and it's not because of Porsche it's just it feels like a car still inside right. I'm an old right. guy give and, me a and, car and that's more sorry that's more my speed and so for that reason I would get the i4 over the Model 3 I also would get the i4 over the Model 3 because I just like the proportions of the i4 more it, it, it just looks like a, a a strong car to me I mean I think for, for this i4 is like the closest you can get and I'll say that with the, M, the M440i2 the gas version these are the closest you can get to what the car that I want to buy today that doesn't exist. And that's either the V8 Audi S4 or the V8 Audi S5. 
they don't make that car anymore. So the closest I can get is either I4 or M440i. That's why I like those cars right now. Mm. Um, but yeah, the, the things that make it less uh, uh, friendly for everyday driving is the, the braking feel. There's just no braking feel on this I4. And that's annoying. BMW has been stripping the feel away for like the yeah. last five years. Yeah. Like, you know, we're, we're used to... Maybe the, seven years. Yeah, we're used to the lack of steering feel at this point. At least it's accurate. Like, you know, I can get... <laughs> but I yeah. don't agree. Well, I, you know, it actually improved a lot since that first M4, but I still am not... I'm not good with it. I, right. It doesn't do... I can't feel what it's... It doesn't align. It's like a video game. And I'll reserve... And I guess I have an issue with that. Yeah, and I'll reserve final judgment about steering feel after I'm, I've you know done my run up the crest for... Are Goodbye you going to bring it up? Breakfast Club this this Friday. Sweet. So I'll see, I'll so see we'll you all there. All, we'll all get to watch you check it out. Yes, yes. So, um, yeah. But, um, as yeah, there, there's... Okay, so, so in El Segundo, where I live, everywhere's a stop sign in the residential part of it. And I pull up to my first stop sign on my way here earlier. And there's a... A 16-year-old kid driving his parents' $20,000 golf cart. And I'm like, well, I'm trying to get to the stop sign before him because I don't want to wait for him. I don't want to be behind him. So I will try to get the car to stop first before he stops. And I brake aggressively in the last six inches of travel. But the way I expected to brake, I thought it was just going to be like a... Instead, the car went full braking force. I'm like, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. You st-. And then... It went, it went into a weird auto hold. It's so not – what you're describing is what I – Yeah, yeah. Then it went, goes into a weird auto hold. not safe. And then I'm trying to move past that auto hold to get it moving, and then it goes boom. And it looks like I – you know, the kid missed the – is this a stick? Does he not know how to drive a stick or something like that? That's what it looked like. I feel like we either need to go manual or automatic. <laughs> that shouldn't it happen. Can't, it shouldn't happen. This in the middle shit is going to yeah. kill everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like there's no way uh, – you know how valuable our old cars are going to be as all this shit – fucking gets worked out oh in a busier <laughs> place that's yeah. crazy yeah yeah so it either better improve quick or we better just cancel everything <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so frustrating yeah because yeah. you want to you want to embrace the future you want to embrace the right. technology you don't want to be a luddite right. i don't want to be a luddite right i can't i can't help myself sometimes <laughs> but no you know what i mean like you yeah. want to just get in with the new shit but yeah. like what if you genuinely think the new shit's no good it's, and you don't like where they're going with it and then but i won't go as far as saying this and this this car isn't any good I oh mean, i don't mean them. yeah, yeah i mean yeah, yeah. all no, of them I mean the future, <laughs> there, but there's, not there, BMW's future. Well, I think my 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 uh, you know my thesis on this is that this is this is still a good car. It's fun to drive. It's powerful with its 536 or whatever horsepower, zero to sixty in about 3.6 seconds. So it's 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 a, it, there's a lot of fun to be had in within those parameters. But there's still some bugs to be. 3.6 fixed. seconds is that really what? Yeah. It is? So the M4 was 3.7 when that was like fucking lightning fast. Yeah, they're they're Whoa. like right neck and neck. Neck and neck. Right, but this yeah. is an electric four door sedan. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's too yeah. close. Yeah. To Over five thousand pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so so there's a couple things to iron out. Let's figure out a way. I mean, you know, it's just going to be a matter of time five, ten, whatever years. Let's figure out a way to get to that point. Be patient, but eventually we'll get there. Where battery power densities will be at the the threshold of you know a hundred of this per this and whatever that that threshold is to get to the the level where it's uh, science fiction movies with, whatever with, it needs to gasoline. be like science fiction movies like so, oh we don't need to worry about energy anymore right right where, where the batteries are put light a power weight. cube in there it's good for fifty thousand years right. all good right so so that's that's on the way it's inevitable whether it's fifty years from now or fifteen years from now it's it's on the way but once we get there to where electric cars don't have to be more than five thousand pounds in a, in a, in a co- compact four door luxury sedan form. Uh, oh, the bat! Once we've sealed the battery technology issue, right, right, because right, this right, car right, is more right. than five thousand pounds because of all the batteries yes. and stuff. Yes. So about I was going to ask you. Well, did you finish? No, you finish. Well, I'm so, so we need to get to the point where they're lightweight and where they're built from the ground up and not from existing internal combustion engine architecture, where there's all these compromises. So, oh, for, for what it is, interesting because we're on, still in the crossover phase yeah. of they're building this on the old thing, mm-hmm. but not everybody's doing that. Not right? everybody's doing that, but but. Um, this there's still compromises because it started out as a gas car and they're you know they're converting it on the fly. So did you like that i3? I loved the i3. It's not out anymore. Is no, it? they discontinued that. Man, I love that thing. That was. I mean, like if I could have one of those and it still worked, you know what I mean? Like the charging and whatever. Yeah. That it was modern. Oh, I would have one of those. That's a fantastic car. They were and leasing it like ninety nine dollars a month. The place was directly across the street. I almost walked over there so many times, but I was like, we don't need one. <laughs> <Weren't those amazing? laughs> but I wanted one I so bad. I know. 
Ter- lined up on the roof. Terrific car. Couldn't give them away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was the. Um, it was like one. It was maybe two. Maybe one ninety nine for the extend or one forty nine for the extended range. Whatever it was, it was it was ridiculous. I'm sorry to go on. No, no, no. I mean, I think that the i three is the most ultra ultimate driving machine BMW. Um, because I mean, they, I, they all went downhill from there. I agree. Well, the i8 and the i3 together, they were kind of developed at the same right, time. Right, right. But the most satisfying but BMW f- to drive right now is actually the X5. BMW's best cars are their SUVs, and that's Amazing. just where we're at right now. Amazing. Is that yeah. because they haven't been updated yet? <laughs> you know, I don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, BMW's SUVs and their X Drive cars are the most satisfying right now, and that's. Apparently, uh, according to Zach and uh, and Smoking Tire, mm-hmm. I think you probably can agree as well. Apparently, everyone's only buying the SUVs. Like nobody buys coupes. Correct. And few people buy the sedans when there's Correct. an SUV version of it. So it's kind of like the car manufacturers are simply just paying more attention to what people are buying. That's exactly right. So that's why maybe. Yeah. 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 So it's a bummer to me though. But I mean, all right. So we're all driving SUVs, whatever. I mean, X5 is great. <laughs> I really like it is. The X5. The X7 is great. They're, they're all, the big ones are mm-hmm. pretty. Damn good, good these days, I know. It's so huge. It just it's sounds stupid. It. stupid. I, I the X3 the is X... the size of the, the second generation X5 mm-hmm. now. I had yeah. the X1 one. It... Yeah, you loved it. But that I was based it. on the three, the outgoing uh, E90 mm-hmm. 328 chassis. Right, that right. The one she had, or the 3 Series chassis. Yeah. And it was awesome because it was a c- car. It was just a jacked up car. Yeah, it was yeah. So good. But it he... was fine. I can't imagine an X7. Oh, like, size wise. Yeah, it was yeah. tiny yeah. in comparison. Like driving your living room? Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. But yeah, they, like... don't, they don't feel that big inside to me either. It's almost like it's all isolation from the outside. Yeah. I, I drove the, uh, the X3 M50. That to M40, me feels M40. as big as the M5, X, the X5 inside. Right, right. But I drove that around Willow Springs a couple of years ago, and I could not believe how much of a sports car that felt like. M- Misha's got one, and it's pretty amazing. Ridiculous. Yeah, that's I mean, his like daily dr- like when he doesn't yeah. bring one of his <laughs> exotic yeah. cars up the crest, he'll drive his M X3 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Hauls ass. But that's where the magic ass. is. That's definitely where the magic is with BMW is the SUVs. Even the bigger ones. Even well, I've only driven as big as the X5 uh, plug-in hybrid. But even with that extra battery right and everything, it handled Azusa Canyon like, like I, a champ. I like that's the X7, impressive. too. They're yeah. all good. Yeah. yeah. Man, what's your favorite car that's out today? I mean, you mentioned these BMWs because of the yeah. drivability. But... Yeah. Well, I'm, I've, I, I've been really actually – so the reason why I booked this press loan was because I, at first, was interested in buying a new i4. Because I'm like, oh, okay, well, that'd be a nice ta- you know, federal tax break and you know, maybe – yeah, maybe – yeah, save some money and let's... Because of the electric, you get the money back yeah. and all. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, okay, well, you know, get maybe... the carpool lane, all that stuff. Yeah, maybe it's my, you know, maybe it's time to convert over to electric is my, my next um, new car. And so I was interested in it for a while, and then my interest started to wane as I learned more things and just, okay, this is how heavy it is, and these are the compromises being made, and it's not built from the ground up as an EV. I'm like, ah, okay, so... Jens you know. just bought an i3 for his wife. Wa- Jens just bought an i3 for his wife, Nicole, and she loves it. Oh. Sorry, I don't know where you well, can get one, but that's car. awesome. Yeah, awesome. fantastic car, yeah. Sorry, um, Sorry So buddy. congratulations, Jens, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, so um, I was talking about... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so my interest started to wane <laughs> in the i4. It's okay. <laughs> Um, and so, uh, we're recording on YouTube, right? right? So, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> R- Rami didn't tell me we're not. Here, back to Will Smith. Crayfish TV says Will isn't a quality actor. He won because they kind of bully everyone. And then, uh, and then, uh, also, they obviously don't have Ukraine anywhere on their radar. And here was where we're getting political. Mm-hmm. You have to be nuts getting upset at the Oscars while people are being blown up. And then, uh, it's like autocorrect. It takes longer to correct when it's wrong. Okay. There we go. <laughs> now we're all caught up. <laughs> so- but apparently YouTube is live. <laughs> yeah, good to go. <laughs> Hi, hi, YouTube. Uh, so, yeah, my so yeah. Once I just started doing more, more research, I was like, okay. So, I think if I were to get a new car, it would probably be let, let's just go with the original gas version. That can be the last hurrah. Um, and so, I've been more focused on M440i lately. But as I get older, I'm thinking more save for a house and let, let that be the priority before we think about new car. But I don't want to. these days. Yeah. I don't want to get in the mind the mindset of either or thinking. I want to think of you know this and that because it's possible. Don't limit yourself. So the nice thing these that. days, you know, in the old days, it was one. Those were two dividing. Those were completely fundamentally different paths. Yeah. Nowadays, they're really kind of just places to park money. <laughs> Which one's smarter depends on you and your situation. Right. But. Cars aren't losing money like they used know, to. They used right? to be depreciating assets. Yeah. Not anymore. Which got if you, me thinking. And if you choose wisely, you can make money while you drive your car, a car you like even. Right. And uh, 
I don't know, yellow car, six years, 60,000 miles worth more than we paid for it. Mm. What there the hell? Go. I know, right? So people were telling me uh, that about the M4, and I'm like, I'm starting to look at M4s. I'm like, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so, so, but, but. There was a lot to, of good to it. I just oh, didn't yeah, end up right. liking it, but there was a lot of good to it. Yeah, M4. yeah. So ultimately, though, I'm, I'm really just focused on saving money because. You know, I need to really start thinking about buying a house or buying okay. property, what have you. So, yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm at with Plus, that. you can get new cars anytime you want that's for the, the sake truth. of uh, your job. That's true. That's true. So, it's just, just being in the industry you, right. you are in. You, right. You're never really lacking a ride. This is true. This is true. Yeah. As long as I'm with an outlet. So, thankfully, I am. So, we're good. Who are we referring to right now? So, yeah, I've been working uh, with Capital One Auto Navigator since November 19th. And I think you broke that when you were here last. How has it been going? Oh, it's been fantastic. Oh, my God. Yeah, I love the job. Um, it's, it's really cool because we are a consumer-facing website. But there's a lot of you know there's a lot of room for enthusiast content too. And there's a lot of room to have your own voice. And so when, whenever you can find that at a publication – that's where you want to be and I feel like I've landed at a good spot um, so really enjoying it and do they let you write the content you want or do you get assignments or how does it what's the setup for you so I've had jobs where all I'm doing is writing and that burns me out so much I, I need to be editing other people and doing other things throughout my time balance Daniel yeah. Yeah. other information yeah. not just your own verbiage yeah yeah and yeah. just balance in life balance balance in life I mean there's plenty of people out there in, in the, ma you know, the major tier one pubs who can you know all they do is write and they're fine with that I'm just not wired that way and so uh yeah and so with this i you know 95 percent of my job is editing uh other people and then oh interesting yeah and i love that I so love you that. are creating content but you are also editing others i'm content. editing others yeah i'm editing some of the best writers in the industry because we've hired you know we, we, we have freelancing for us some of the best people that's it this is amazing so what yeah. is you then so you're not just talent then for them no what's you want to tell anybody what your capacity is with? Well, I mean, so in the first six months. I mean, you sound more like a producer to me as well. Well, in the first six months of this job, I'm just a contractor. And then they hire you on. So, so, so. <laughs> right. So, oh, so okay. I mean, you know. I'm a jack of all trades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, but. You want me to dance? What's your so, favorite song? <laughs> so I don't really have an official title yet or anything. You know, we're still in the early days. But you are story. creating your own as well as editing other people's. Yeah. Content. And that's where I want to be with very it. Very cool. That's where I want to be with it. If, if I'm writing, if only, if, if I only have to write something once or twice a month, that's where I want to be. That's where I am. Oh, awesome. I am happier than a pig in shit. So that you can, oh, uh, it, it's not because you couldn't write more than that, but you're able to dedicate the, yeah. Okay. I, I like editing more than writing. I understand. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm, I, I've landed somewhere really good, and I, I feel very lucky about it. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And what, what's great about this ah! job, <laughs> <laughs> no, what's great about this job is that I can freelance too. So I'm still writing for Rob Report whenever I want. Oh, great. And I, yeah, and still doing stuff for Auto Conduct as well whenever I great. want. Great. So yes. So yes. Awesome. So yeah, life is freaking good. Well, I'm very happy to hear that because last time I talked to you, I wasn't sure. You oh, know what I mean? Because it goes like this, and <laughs> yeah, then it can course. change like that. Oh, I know. Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I haven't been this satisfied with just the way everything is running in my life for about four years, four and a half years. Wow. Like, everything is just He's going well. He's got the numbers right on it. <laughs> Everything's going really stats. well right now. The, you know, just everything. Yeah. So. Well, keep it up, mister. I I'm doing my best. What can we do to help? How do we keep per keep this perpetual motion machine going? Uh, just as long as I get to see you guys uh, in some capacity on a, on a, a regular basis, then I'll, I'll be good. Well, honestly, it's been a while. It's probably been the biggest gap there's ever been since we've known you. Yeah, and I don't like that, um, unfortunately. Well, you had car <laughs> issues, you had life issues. You know, yeah, shit yeah, happens. Yeah, life happens. Yeah. We, and, you know, yeah, once, like that. once I started working, you know, Monday through Friday, 7 to 3 again, you know, I, I can't really get up to Breakfast Club until, you know, for, except for once a month. And You're in the car industry, though. Everybody knows it's, um, like, it's become a thing now where that's work for people. You know what I mean? Like, the auto conduct people, they come up and they're like, well, we're gonna see. you know what I mean? Everyone's <laughs> all the photographers come up. Oh, I genuinely we're, go we're. up there because I want to see the homies. You, you know? won't you won't believe what it's like now. It's like it's like doing Pike's Peak because there's photographers every, like, half a mile on the way up there. Well, I mean, I, I was up there, what, like, a month ago, so, I mean, different. It was Different. Even even in that time, in yeah. the last two or three weeks, oh, it's geez. blown up with okay. old school Different. large format photography. Smile, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, I've you know seen that guy before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that guy. And yeah. now uh, it seems like the whole way up, there's like three or four or five different stations where there are like photo zones. Yeah. Like where people come through because uh, because of the parade of all the amazing cars that come through. Well, yeah, and you know, I on Friday I'm going up there to work too. I'm doing my morning photo shoot of the i4 up there, and then I'm doing breakfast test, afterwards. Test the car out yeah, there. Right. 
Right. Beautiful. So yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm up ah, to. In addition to see everybody, but you know, yeah, I'm killing two birds with one stone. That's the ticket. Yeah. Is everything good in your personal life? Every, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Everything's great. Oh. Everything is great. <laughs> yes. No details, but everything's great. No details, great. but everything's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, you see the smile? For sure. Are you shouldn't be. <laughs> I mean, it's big. God. Yeah. Life is good. Life is good. We just can't tell people why. No. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them guessing. Keep them guessing. <laughs> Life's All good. good. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, let's party. And it's my birthday month, too. So. Is there anything you want to talk about? Are you going to do a full 360 in that chair by the time the, the hour's up? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I mean, has anybody done this yet? I think not. Well, no, I don't think so. I think not. I think so. James Commissar, who's going to be here on, on Thursday, should find this rather interesting. I, I'm excited about all of it. I'm just being really careful with the chair. I know it's... <laughs> Pulling it too much. Okay, there we go. I wouldn't worry about it. There we go. All right. Chris well, Farley rolled over off the stage in those things a couple times. I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I that's think they're a, made of uh, two by fours underneath that's, whatever. That's what it feels there. like. Yeah. But uh, that's a late night place at first, and I'm proud to herald the coming of a new age. Uh, the truth is, I would like to get rid of those chairs. What? Really? I want to get rid of those chairs, yeah. and I mean, obviously, I want the late night desk, but I want to get rid of those chairs. Um, they don't go with our stuff. Uh, I think we've we get the letterman of it all. I don't know that we need to sell that any harder. And um, they don't go with our stuff even a little bit in any way <laughs> at all. Plus, we're wearing them out. Like, you know, when this was an idea of like, ah, oh, six months or a year, you know, we'll just kind of see how it goes. It's looking pretty good still. Yeah. Oh, the, the fabric's in fine shape. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you can, the, yeah. the cushion you're sitting on, you're on the springs. I mean, yes, you can feel that. Yes, definitely feel that. Yeah. So um, I have an idea of what chairs to replace them with i was thinking of some stuff whatever we there's a lot of a lot of changes in the works coming soon i like the idea of a flat cushion because it reminds you of all the famous ass that's been planted here over the years well one was slightly more broken in when we got it mm. than the other right because that makes sense was it this one yeah yeah and then we continued doing that so that if we ever got them restuff be like well i think it was closest to this you know mm -hmm. make them both closest yeah. to this yeah or do this one and then the other one, however. Like, that, that's what we would do, like car seats, right? You do one and then, oh, that turned out good. All right, now move it over mm -hmm. and do the other. Yeah, I don't know. Do you collect stuff? Do you collect anything? Have you ever had any weird bug of like, oh, I have this weird attachment to something and I can't explain why? That's a great question. So I started collecting every issue of Motor Trend magazine from 1992 on. And then when I moved to Bali, I had nowhere to store them. I'm like, uh, crap, okay, I have to throw these away. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I just it, it was everything happened so quickly. I didn't have time to eBay anything. I just you know, I, I know I could, I, I know people who collect magazines who will eventually get rid of them. So it's not something I'm worried about. But it, it, it was a sad moment for me because that was like my my childhood of reading all those magazines and studying cars and trying you know just being passionate about that subject matter and eventually becoming who I am today. A host on the Motor Trend Channel. Dream come true, right? So right. Yeah. Well done, sir. Yeah. Manifest that destiny. <laughs> you deserve it. You yeah. deserve it. Yeah. Keep, I, I, keep going. Yeah. What's next? Oh, God. I know you're loving life right now, and yeah. things are going so great, even though <laughs> um, we can't talk about why. But, but, what's next? Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I, I'm an aspiring actor. I, mm -hmm. I, I will always be involved in automotive media, and that's my, you know, my number one passion. And that's the lifetime thing. But I, I do want to start acting at some point. Well, you know, some point after forty. But I, and I'm doing. A, I'm going very slowly. I mean. Gl Glacial. You could, you could be an actor right now. You have the energy to sustain that lifestyle. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'm working on it. Like I took my first acting class, Basics of Booking, January 23rd. So the first I'm, acting class yeah, is yeah. Basics of Booking? Basics of Booking, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Way to work on the craft. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like, how to interview. I mean, what the shit? It was a good general. <laughs> I'm sure it was, yeah, it but was what good. about the craft? Well, the craft's important, too, obviously. But, but yeah, I just wanted to get a Sorry. cursory overview of. Oh, you went to that because that's what you were looking for. Yeah, okay, yeah, fine. yeah. That yeah, makes sense. Yeah. No, the craft is cool, too. If you right? went to an acting yeah. class and the teacher goes, here's where we start. All right, step one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Booking. Yeah. Like, Fucking, you're in the wrong class. Get out. You know, I, I mean, it's more accurate to call it an industry class. But yeah, that's 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 what I did. And, um, good for you. It was good at insight, least... but I'm just chipping away slowly at it. The fact that you're moving towards it is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all you have to do. You know, and if you don't accomplish it in this lifetime, there's always next. I mean, who gives a hell? So, so uh, <laughs> as long as you're working towards it, you have that right. the dopamine and all the right. things. You're, 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 you'll make it happen, though. That's the thing. Right. So, so I, I probably really it. quickly. I, I believe it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I. 
I was lucky enough to um, to have a very good acting mentor in my mid twenties when I moved to Australia. Very good friend of mine. He had an empty room in his flat in Sydney, and that's where I ended up staying for the six months that I lived there. Very, very lucky. And <laughs> Russell Crowe. <laughs> <laughs> his, his name is uh, Wayne Pygram, and he was uh, Scorpius uh, on Farscape. So, so um, he was a he was a really good re- resource for me when I was starting to think about this. And I was, you know, hanging out with him in his back porch in Wogga Wogga, New South Wales, one one evening. <laughs> and you're not making fun. That's the actual name. <laughs> no, that's right? the actual name. Wogga Wogga. Wogga Wogga. And I, I can't say it in an American accent because I've never heard it in an American accent. So that's why I say it as an Aussie. Because Good for you, <laughs> yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. So so yeah. It's not, so the not delight actually, for the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. So I was hanging out with Wayne. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, I, I've always thought, you know, about becoming an actor, but I'm not really sure. And you know, maybe it's something I'll do later on in, li- in my life. And he says, well, Manuel, well, you know, it's um, it's actually better if you uh, start after forty because you know, there's people drop out by that point and then there's less competition. I'm like, oh, well, that decides it. Then I'll probably that's something I'll do after 40. There's yeah. a split, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to be a struggling actor or something. You know, like I'll start a career that I actually enjoy and that way I have something steady and then I can you know, do, do the acting thing. You're somebody who tried it later and then is a success right out of the gate. That's what I see. <sighs> so, you know, you from, got it. from your mouth to God's ears. So <laughs> That's uh, how it works. <laughs> I got a direct line, pal. You have no idea. Excuse me. Oh, I'm on hold. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be a few <laughs> no go ahead so so yeah you know I, I've, I've been you know slowly working at this and then when I moved to Bali in 2019 for uh, for those few months in the summer of 2019 that's when I realized okay when I get back to LA in September of 2019 after my 79 day stint here I'm gonna actually start pursuing it even more now I'm actually gonna like constantly chip away instead of like thinking about it and like oh that that it'll be at that point like okay now I'm gonna actually start doing the work so I come back then, you know, get that random email out of nowhere that you know, eventually leads to Seduce by Speed, my, my first TV show. And that's great. But, um, you know, so, so those things happen and then other opportunities happen and stuff like that that I still can't talk about. So that's all great. That's all great. <laughs> then October 20th, 2021 happens. Okay. I've had a couple of dreams like this in my in my lifetime, but this is this is the most recent one that just like you wake up from it after, you know, after you have it at six in the morning. It's like that last dream you have before you wake up for the day. And you just wake up from it and you're flooded with serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine, all those great happy chemicals from having a dream that's just like, oh my God, yes, this is me. I have the answer, right? You wake up and you, I have the answer. It's just like, this is, this is me. This is everything. This is everything I want. Mm. This is like, this is, it's not even just everything I want. It's just like, this is who I, 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 this is how, this is why I, incarnated in into this physical reality to do this specific thing like that's how appropriate it felt and i was just i was so high from that dream i just wanted to replay it over and over and over in my mind until i had to get up so the dream was <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so glad you didn't spontaneously combust there for a second i thought it was i thought it might be over for all of us i mean that's the what whole the studio was going to explode oh you are God. a ball of energy this is incredible so, so lay it on me so the dream starts with this montage of like trying to give you the, um, the 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 synopsis or like kind of like all the background of the sitcom's story, that way the characters don't have to talk in that stupid dialogue where they obviously have known each other for twenty years, but they have to talk like, exposition. Well, you know, Lucy, you know that you're not the best singer, even though we've been ma- married for twelve years, but you know you're not the best singer. Like you've been married for twelve years. Like, do you think I'm stupid? So I, I hate it when sitcom, sitcoms do that, where they have to explain all this shit for the audience, you know, uh, as, as we're getting into the, you know, the pilot episode. There are good ways to do it. It all depends right. on the writing. So Exposition this, is what we're this talking This felt about. like a genius way of doing it, where you do a montage, everything filmed on location, and it just, it, and, and in the first three minutes, you already know what's going on, you're clued in, okay? So it goes through this three-minute montage. And then the first scene in, the, in front of the studio audience cuts to me. I'm the first line of the fir- of the pilot of the show. <laughs> it's not my show, though. The show is led by Beth Bears, and the way I remember the dream, so Beth Bears is the blonde from Two Broke Girls, and the way I remember the dream is that she had handpicked me to be on this sitcom with her, and, that, and, and I'm about to deliver the first line, and like I take the deep breath in to deliver that first line, and then I wake up. And that was the dream, and that's what made me higher than I've been in a year. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So after that dream, I, I, that dream is pretty much, I, I try to think about that dream like 15 minutes a day. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Do you draw at all? I, I used to draw when I was a child. I used yeah, to draw a Porsche 911 
uh, instrument clusters. I'd go to the garage. Oh, now you I'd have the one. Cluster, so that I'd obviously go, worked. I'd go to the garage three years, as early as three years old and then go to the living room table and draw the gauges. Well, I would dry whatever you can of this other thing, too, because you're going to make that shit happen. I have a dream board, so I've got that going. Awesome. Yeah. Ugh, it's just as good. Drawing it sometimes helps me because it's like you're creating the vision. And you're using all those neural pathways. Yeah. I don't know if it actually does or not, but it, like somehow it... Yeah. Whatever works for the person, right? What, you know, it's it, it, all permission slips are valid. <laughs> um, I love you, pal. I love you, too. We've, we've done the time. This has been a great hang. You're, you're just a delight as usual. Uh, I'm really happy that things are going so well for you. I'm, so I'm happy really to report delighted to you about guys that. that. Things are going well. Yeah. yeah, you deserve it. Thank you. I say that to you every time. You Thank deserve you. the best. Thank you. You've got a, a wonderful shining light that you love to share with other people, and to me, that's what this world needs. So, um, as far as I'm concerned, you are necessary to help make the world go round. So, you're one of the good ones. That. Keep it up. That's all I have to say. Your successes will be many and plentiful, bountiful, abundance. All of the good words. I love it. You've got this. Thank you. Uh, let's see. How do people follow you? Thank you for being here. How do people follow you? MC3 Films, Instagram. That's where I'm at. Is there anything to plug while you're here? Uh, yeah, I mean, watch Seduced by Speed on Motor Trend. Uh, you still get it, right? On demand? On demand. It's still on there. And uh, Capital One Auto Navigator. Just search it on Google. You'll find it. Beautiful. Yeah. And no word on another season, but it's certainly possible. I mean, I figure it's something that's, you know, it could happen at you know at some time, some point. We've had conversations with the Top Gear people because, like, you know, she used to rep well, Robin, Dax, whatever. She used to work with those guys. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they did a second season, like, that's in the can waiting for somebody to put it on television someplace. <laughs> so I don't think you're alone. I think their whole properties, I feel like they're just sort of figuring out what they're doing over yeah, there. Yeah, you know, in due time, the timing will be right. It was a good show, though. Like, it's Thank it's you. of all the shows, like, that one deserves at least another season just Thank to you. see where it can go, you know? I appreciate that. So, uh, love you. We love you. Love you, too. I think that's it. James Commissar on Thursday, you guys. Really excited from the Commissar collection. We are going to be talking. The theme by the evening, uh, by the way, is late night. We're talking about Carson. Letterman, all that stuff. He'll come back another time with, with uh, Greg Grumberg, and we'll talk about the rest of his collection. But we're trying to stick <laughs> to late night for this one, the theme of late night. Um, uh, we love you so much. We love you at home. Please love one another. Uh, the world's crazy. Don't get up and smack your friends. Um, that's the irony of all of that. Like, Will Smith and uh, and Chris Rock are friends. Like that was Maybe that's why it happened. Maybe it was like, oh, you're my friend. You should know better. Like that kind of, who knows? Who knows? I don't know. Uh, but we love everybody, so stop smacking each other in the face. Yeah. <laughs> see, see you later. Good advice. <laughs> <laughs>